hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Taking Stock Live. I'm Khalilo Reynolds, so happy to have you with us. Remember, we're bringing you all the latest business news and telling you how it will affect you and your money. And of course, don't forget to head over to the website and subscribe to the newsletter at kalilareynolds.com slash newsletter. And it's super important right now because we are getting ready, gearing up to launch the masterclass on November 29. And all important announcements are going to be delivered to your inbox via that newsletter. The masterclass is going to be coming with uh, not just a six-part special video feature, but also we have our ebook that you will be able to download as part of the package, our investments tracker spreadsheet. You have your broker guide and so many different supporting documents that we are working very hard to put together for you. So make sure you head on over and subscribe. So what are we talking about today? You know, Christmas is coming. It's right around the corner. Some people have already started uh, decorating. Have you? Anybody put up their Christmas tree yet? Like I've been thinking about doing it for the kids, but uh, you know, it's still early November, maybe later on in the month, I'm going to get that done. But I'm starting to feel like, you know, it's, it's really right around the corner. So let me know in the chat, have you put up your Christmas decorations yet? Have you started preparing? Because there are a lot of things that might be quite different this year, especially given the pandemic situation and where we are with inflation, food prices. And that's what we're going to be talking about on the show this evening. So here's a look at what's coming up, followed by what's hot in business. On this episode of Taking Stock, have you started your Christmas preparations yet? With food prices skyrocketing, better order that ham early. We'll find out from GK Foods and Jamaica Broilers whether they'll be able to meet the Christmas demand and what prices are likely to look like compared to last year. And the analysts weigh in on the latest market developments. Seprod results are out. How did they do? Pfizer shares surged nearly 11% after the company announced positive results for an experimental COVID pill. And Dollar Tree has cut its full-year profit forecast due to surging supply chain costs. We'll discuss. But first, here's what's hot. Brought to you by Jamaica Money Market Brokers, your best interest at heart. The Jamaican dollar was at its weakest against the U.S. dollar last week, continuing a downward trend over several weeks. On Friday, the dollar closed to trading at $156.32 Jamaican to one U.S. dollar, beating the previous record low of $156.28 set a day earlier. The dollar last traded in that territory in the summer when it had hit $156.14 Jamaican on July 27. The Jamaican dollar has again been consistently trading above the $150 threshold since October, erasing slight gains made during September. It's seemingly going back under pressure as demand rises for the greenback heading into the Yuletide season. The pandemic also continues to affect the foreign exchange market. Since the start of the year, the Jamaican dollar has fallen by almost 10%. Victoria Mutual is now the VM Group. The official rebranding took place last week, some two years since the company's transformation process began. The move aims to make the company more visible and effective to the public as it adds new products, grows membership and increases revenues for less popular subsidiaries. The company, whose core business is mortgage lending, has grown to incorporate other functions such as remittances, wealth management, pension fund management, stockbroking, securities trading, property management, and most recently fintech services. VM has invested over $2 billion in the transformation program. The group's main color has changed from burgundy to grapefruit, while the logo has been changed from the encircled VM to connecting letters. They also have a new tagline. The Development Bank of Jamaica, DBJ, has engaged Sagicor Investments to lead the privatization process of the government-owned Jamaica Mortgage Bank. JMB is one of several state-owned entities that the government said it would divest through listing on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. DBJ expects cabinet approval of the divestment before year-end. A representative of the DBJ disclosed to the Jamaica Observer that Sagicor was selected in 2020 after a competitive tender process. 
However, no timeline was given for when an initial public offer IPO will be floated after receiving the nod from the government. Pfizer has developed a new COVID-19 pill that it says reduces hospitalizations and deaths in high-risk patients by 89%. The dramatic result has the potential to alter the course of the pandemic, as a pill that can be taken at home at the first sign of symptoms could effectively tame the COVID-19 crisis globally. In the Pfizer trial involving 1,219 unvaccinated adults, only 0.8% of those who received the drug Paxlovid within three days of getting sick ended up in hospital. None of the recipients died. Pfizer's announcement last week came after another pill produced by Merck received its first regulatory approval in the UK. Paxlovid is on track for authorization in early 2022. Uber has partnered with Visa to offer discounted leases to users in Jamaica to encourage more in-app card use. The ride-sharing company says the initiative aims to reward users that are Visa card holders. It comes against the positive response the company has been receiving since the app became available locally in June. Uber says it wants to encourage more people to go cashless, a more easier transaction method. The one-month promotion ends November 15 and gives users a 4 US dollar or 592 Jamaican dollar discount on their first lease when they select Visa as a payment method and enter the code Visa Uber JA. Terms and conditions apply. Uber says users can look out for more promotions and discounts in the future. In September, Uber offered discounted leases to vaccination centers. What's Heart was brought to you by Jamaica Money Market Brokers, your best interest at heart. Hey, moneymakers, you're not an official part of the family until you have your merch. Visit kalilorenolds.com slash store to order your t-shirt and your mask today. Let's get this money. This segment of Taking Stock is brought to you by Bulwark Insurance Agency. Insurance made easy. And Appleton Estate, Jamaican excellence. Welcome back, everybody, to Taking Stock. As usual, I want to know where you're joining us from. Let's see what we have in the house and who we have in the house. And if you're join just joining us and you didn't hear just, you know, the little opening section, the introduction, I was asking how many of you have already started preparing for Christmas? Like who put up Christmas tree already? Let me know. I am very tempted to put mine up. It's early still, but, you know, you have the kids. The kids love the lights. You go to the supermarket, you're already seeing the Christmas trees are up, the Christmas decorations are starting to go up and they start asking me you know mommy when are you putting up ours so who knows i might do mine early but who is already feeling the christmas spirit and speaking of spirits uh, christmas spirits there's a lot going on in the coming months you know the past couple months we've been talking a lot about inflation we've been talking a lot about food prices this whole supply chain issue and what's been going on with the shipping problems from china and how that has passed through to basically everything so that's what we're talking about on this evening show we're looking at what those prices are looking like particularly the food prices kind of know we love our ham right you must have your christmas ham that is a staple on every christmas uh, table. You must have your, your chicken, so your stew chicken or however you like to prepare your chicken for, for Christmas Day. So we are talking about this issue and finding out you know, from two major producers what their suppliers are looking like and what things are likely to look like for Christmas. So have prices risen? Is there a shortage? Is there going to be a shortage? Will they be able to meet demand? Let's find out from Chief Supply Chain Officer at GK Foods Division, Diana Robinson. And we also have Vice President of the Best Best, Best, Best Chicken Division at Jamaica Polish, Dave Spearman. Welcome, Diane. Welcome, Dave. Thank you, Kalina. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Kalina. How are you doing? I am doing quite well, and I will be better once I know that my ham is secure for Christmas. Yes, we have your cover. Yes. We have your cover. Your ham is, your ham is safe. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's start with you, Diane, there at GK, because you know Grace Kennedy is a well known brand for that Christmas ham. What are the supplies looking like for heading into the Christmas season? All right. So we're off to a slightly slow start because, I mean, you made reference to the pandemic and its impact across the globe. And our pork industry is primarily driven by the small pig farmers who, at the outset, were 
a little hesitant about committing to raising pigs. So there was a limited supply to begin with, but things are now picking up. And even though it's a little late in the season, we are still continuing to process and hams are flowing out of the factory and they will be available for Christmas. Okay, so are we looking at any shortages? Um, I wouldn't say shortage. You mean there are some particular sizes that um, may be more popular and those may not be as readily available, but hams in general will not be short. Okay, good. I, I am very relieved to hear that. So let's hear about the chicken side of things. Will we have enough chicken this <laughs> Christmas? All right, thanks, Kalila. Um, so, Chalila, we um, typically um, in October, early October, start to do our ramping up for the Christmas holidays. Um, albeit um, this year, we know the challenges with um, COVID and um, the aspects of the economy, how it's looking. But nevertheless, we are well on our way. We have been ramping up steadily and nicely. And we have quite a slate of um, products scheduled to roll out um, for the traditional Christmas season, um, our roasters and, and various ham products um, that um, Jamaicans look forward to from us each year. Okay, so no, no supply issues on your end either? No, we have been really blessed. I think, Kalila, we have a fantastic team um, at uh, Best Dressed Chicken and we have been doing quite a bit of planning um, ahead and um, fortunately for us as uh, Jamaica broilers, we are pretty much vertically integrated. So we control our own supply of eggs um, right through to the end of the value chain. So we have obviously been impacted at times with um, you know the logistic issues that everybody speaks about. Um, but um, thank God we have been able to um, basically fulfill what we need to do to supply the market all the time. So since neither of you seem to be having supply issues heading into Christmas, that should mean that prices should be fairly stable, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so, well, so we are... So, Diane first. Okay. All right. Um, prices are going to be as stable as we can, given all the uncertainties in the supply chain and all the inputs. So we're not out of the woods yet. We're the disruptions from the pandemic are concerned. So as those prices move, you know, inputs move, our farmers, they do have to recover their inputs. And um, we do the best we can in terms of holding the prices, but there's some of them that it becomes impossible to hold much longer. And Dave? Yeah so, yeah, so we're hoping to keep prices um, stable um, for the rest of the year. Um, we, we are also um, faced with the various challenges of raw material input cost changes that are very volatile during the year. But we, at this stage, we're hoping to, to hold strain um, for December. So compared to last year, Diane, what are we looking uh, at in terms of prices? Because I'm sure that even though you're holding it relatively stable, it's still gone up since last year. Yes, it. the inputs have, and as a consequence, the finished product will also go up. So we're looking at things that we've tried our best to hold it below double digits. So there will be movement, Kalila, but in terms of going right across the board, across the range of hams, we have worked to try and hold them, you know, as I said, below double digits. What's the popular ham size? Right now, it's the picnic ham, because the out of pocket for that is um, where our consumers are gravitating towards right now. But all the sizes are going to be available from your leg to your half ham to the picnics right through. But it sells by, by weight. So yes. about what size mm -hmm. most people tend to, to go for? I'm trying to establish what the prices are likely to look like for an average size or a popular size ham. Um, for their, 
there is the 2.2 kgs there you know you're going up to 40 you're going to the leg hams which are some of them massive you know like six seven eight kgs you know and um but your popular sizes tend to be the smaller picnics which are somewhere between two and four kgs so the weight varies because as you know the peak the size of the pig varies when we get them so what's the cost per kilogram well at this point i'm going off my memory here there you're looking anywhere somewhere between 13 1300 and something right to between 1300 and 1400 per kg and where was that last year do you remember uh not off the top of my head no mm. And in terms of, mm -hmm. and I said, this has been a roller coaster. Yes, <laughs> you have been able to keep this. All right. It has been. Dave, compared to last year, what are chicken prices like now? Mute it, Dave. Dave? Um, all right, so Kalila, like everybody else, we are faced with um, the imp oh. Are you hearing me? Yes, we're hearing you now. Kalila? Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, I think oh, there's okay, a... Okay, I'm not sure what really happened there. Yeah, I was just saying that, like... Oh, yes. I was saying that we have been faced with um, all the raw material input cost increases. Um, chicken prices are are up over last year, um, but I would say not significant relative to all the other proteins that um, are out there. And chicken still remains the the cheapest form of protein um, available um, in the marketplace today. All right. Well, let's look at the performance of both of your companies, because, yes, we had to talk about Christmas prices because everybody, you know, we're getting into that stage now where we're starting to planning for starting to plan for the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. But here on Taking Stock, we also talk a lot about uh, companies, especially listed companies. And both of your companies are on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, Diane. GK uh, results for six months ended June 30 came out recently and your net profit is up 30 percent tell me what uh what what is the cause of that what what allowed you to increase profits quite nicely well i think first and foremost clearly it's a you know testament to the the team that we have that everybody has just buckled down and focused on what we have to do and we have been very creative innovative because with the supply chain challenges it's a matter of the tried and tested ways of doing things had to change and the person you know the team members have just essentially embraced the changes and done what has to be done and had to be done to ensure that products were available we also have you know wonderful suppliers who we work very closely with because what we do is you know basically manage that relationship so we've worked very closely with them and they have been on board with us. And, you know, the journey has, you know, it has been a rough one, but I think the partnerships that we have forged over the years has served us very well during the pandemic. Right. So you also did quite a, a number of things in on the marketing side. You had some pretty nice marketing campaigns. I saw you guys doing quite a bit on social media. You had a move with grace and the chill and grill campaigns. Yeah, we, we noticed, we pay attention. But I, I also noticed that you had some impressive results with some particular core products. So tell me about which products have been doing well for you. Well, you know, funnily in the pandemic, you know, a lot of, because consumption patterns have changed, there has been a demand for our products, Tropical Rhythms, has just basically exceeded all the targets that have been set, both domestic and the international targets. Um, our fish and meat category, our sardines, have just been flying off the shelves. And, you know, I, I think our consumers have realized that there is value 
we don't um, set out to be the cheapest in the market, but there is value in what Grace Kennedy brings to the table. Yeah, tropical rhythms. I love. The, I, I like the fruit punch flavor of the tropical yeah, rhythms. Okay. <laughs> it's one of my favorites, and the mango carrot. Mango carrot. So that is the top seller. Oh, it is. Yes, it is. Really good. And Dave, I see best dressed uh, branching out into lots of. I would call them innovative products. Innovative for Jamaica, anyway. So it's not just about the the, the whole chicken or the chicken parts. But you've been doing a lot of things that I find very exciting. So you have your your nuggets and your strips and and the sausages. Tell me how those have been performing. Um, Kalila, one word, excellent. Um, we, I would say over the last 10 years or so, um, value added products, as we call them, the nuggets, the the frankfurters, all of those products, um, the sales and demand for them have, have just shut up. Um, since the COVID um, it, um, pandemic, uh, the, we have seen where a lot of, I guess, stay at home work or schooling from home, um, people have been more cooking a lot more at home and a lot of people are going towards um, the ready to eat stuff, the easy to prepare meals. Uh, we have a whole range of those products and um, the demand and sales, as I said, has gone way up. Uh, we, we, we do offer a wide range, um, you know, whether it is um, for kids or adults, burgers. Uh, we have the rotisserie products in the supermarkets. And um, I should say that for even the holidays coming up, uh, we do also do picnic hams and, and, um, and leg hams. And oh, we'll have those okay. available um, for um, the Chris upcoming Christmas um, season. Um, Jamaicans typically um, like a bigger chicken at the, um, for Christmas, um, for Christmas dinner. So we always bring to the table um, annually our roaster. It's uh, probably six, seven pound chicken um it's delicious and um i hope you try it um, um for this christmas Khalil. uh but we, we have a whole slew of things and we're really proud of how that segment has performed for us um over the last i would say year especially and um it's it's um really rewarding to see how um jamaicans have, have really taken to our products and let me also add that um, you would you would appreciate that earlier um, last year we came out with our no antibiotics ever program, um, which is the only, we are the only chicken company in Jamaica that um, is NAE um, certified. Um, so our our value added products, which are all um, chicken based, are also. Um, no antibiotics ever as well. Um, we are just rolling out the packaging um, with, the, the, with the claim on it as we change out our packaging on the, on the value added side. Um, but our chickens are um, pretty much, we, we started that program to bring, um, you know, take advantage of what is happening in the world where people are moving away from using things like antibiotics in growing um, yeah. animals. Um, and as you would be, um, know, next week um, is uh, the AMR World um, Antimicrobial Week. And, um, you know, we are proud to say that, you know, we have joined that, um, that, that uh, grouping of, of, of um, businesses that can make that claim. Uh, no, I, I didn't know that that was coming up next week. Yes. Um, but let me tell you, since I've discovered your chicken tenders yes <laughs> yes, yes, yes 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 <laughs> that's, been, that's been the go-to for the family literally straight yeah, up the food yeah, yeah. into the oven 30 minutes yes, and yes you have your and, here. yes and, and i should say kalila that you talk about the tenders so i would say even two years ago right you know we would be generating tenders and we're trying to say all right you know what do we do with these products because the take-up was was slow now we have to be fighting to, to, for tenders, you know, because the demand has just gone through the roof for us. Um, so we're really happy and we really thank the Jamaican people for, you know, the, the support that they have um, given to Best Dressed Chicken over the years and continue yeah. to give it to us. That's been my new mm -hmm. go-to product. The, yes. the Frankfurters, when I just saw that on the shelves or in the freezer section, the refrigerated section a few months ago. That's a new product? 
No, so we, outside of the best dressed chicken, we have our reggae jam in line and we have our Hamilton um, smokehouse line, so Hamilton's line. So the reggae that has been out for several years now, but we have been introduced. No, not the reggae jam in. There's a fancy looking one in oh, the packaging. There's a really pretty looking the, one. The best dress in the best dress brand? Yes, right. So, right. right. So what we have been doing is the, the, what I call the premium sausages or francs. We have been putting those also under the best, best dress brand. So uh, we have those in both beef and chicken um, right now. And again, those are where some of those were introduced earlier this year. And again, doing very well. We're really yeah, happy. I saw them in the, in the refrigerated section beside the imported uh, products. Yes. yes. And I, I and tried it because I said, oh, yes. this looks, the it's, packaging was very attractive. And it's yes. cheaper than the imported brand. And yes. it, it tastes pretty good as well. So. So are you exporting any of those products, the tenders, nuggets, frankfurters, and so on? So, right. So, so chicken, we do export products into the region, um, the Caribbean part in, in um, Cayman, um, the Turks, and a couple of other islands. And we also have our own our free range um, chicken that um, we do supply some of it on the local market, but predominantly it goes into the export trade. It's a little bit more pricey, so um, th that market um, basically takes it up quite a bit. But we do, uh, exports have grown for us in a major way um, compared to two years ago. Mm. Well, I keep watching your progress for sure. They're at best dressed, especially since you have the new factories overseas yes. and all that. And right. they're at GK. I know that you you guys do a lot of exports, so earning a lot of yes. foreign exchange mm -hmm. for the country. But uh, what about imports for you? Do, do you import ham or is all locally produced? All our hams are locally produced. Um, there is actually a process in place with the Ministry of Agriculture, Kalila, where imports of pork, <coughs> excuse me, are banned for the protection of the pork industry. And the, the fact, I'm not sure if you're aware that um, African swine fever was recently um, discovered in the Dominican Republic. Oh. So for that reason, even more so, imports of ham and um, certain pork products are not allowed. So all our hams are produced right there at our factory in Paradise, Savannah Mar. So that's, oh. everything is a local, locally based. Oh, right. I didn't I didn't know about that, uh, that case yes. in the Dominican Republic. Right. So to keep our eye on. What about mm -hmm. other popular Christmas products that you produce? You have the, the sorrel and what else? Pineapple, coconut powder. Those the things. coconut milk powder. We have our, um, well, pineapple slices, which those are actually imported, but we also have our um, sweet and spicy pepper jelly, um, which is a great complement to the hams. And for the mango carrot, if you're doing a ham this Christmas, then that is one of the things that you can use to make the glaze for your hams. And we, we, um, we also have a complete range of our, our consumers. We have our peas and beans, you know, the gungo peas. You have it, you have it dried. You have it in um, canned. You also have um, the range of beans for those persons who, you know, want a break from the um, meat-based proteins. But everything is going to be available for Christmas. No supply issues. Everything may not be as available as we would like it to be because some things have been constrained by the, the freight issues that um, still obtain. But we are working to ensure that there is that everything is represented. Right. All right. So, mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Diane. Thanks, Dave, for joining me. All the best for the upcoming holiday season. And the same to you. And oh, thank same you. to you. Thank you, and thank you for having us. Yes. All right. Thank you. Make sure I get my supplies yes. early. So yes, yes, yes. yes, please, please. Yes, do. yes, yes. And by the way, Kalila, we 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 start rolling out our Christmas products um, November nineteenth. So um, look out for them in the supermarkets, everyone, and enjoy the Christmas coming up. And we wish Jamaica and um, everyone um, a, a, a Merry Christmas when it comes. And um, hopefully, it's one of those Christmas that we are accustomed to. For um, in previous years, I sure will. A little my different, table, but my table yes. shall be laden. Yes, yes. My table mm -hmm. shall be laden with locally produced products. This all oh, locally, well, buy best dress for that. 
Yes, and you know you have your grace hams yes. and all the other things and your tropical rhythms. Yes, sir. Speaking of locally produced products, I have a, a very special one for both of you. And this is from Appleton. Where's my camera? Oh, my. Hey. Appleton, eight year aged rum. All I right. I hope find the center of the camera. Yes, we, <laughs> so we're seeing it. For both of you. And these will all be right. delivered to you probably tomorrow. So, anyway, right. thank you all so right. much. I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Good, good. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Right. Bye. 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 Diane and Dave. Well, up next, we're going to have your market recap. And the analysts are standing by. Which companies do you think did the best last week? Let me know in the chat. The Taking Stock was brought to you by Bulwark Insurance Agency. Insurance made easy. And Appleton Estate, Jamaican excellence. Time now for your market recap. Brought to you by Sagicor Investments. Think wealth, think Sagicor Investments. The Jamaica Stock Exchange declined with the combined index losing 1,600 points or less than 1%. 107 stocks traded across both the main and junior markets of the JSC for the week ending Friday, November 5, 2021. 52 advanced, 48 declined and 7 stayed the same. 84 million shares changed hands on the Jamaican dollar market, totaling nearly $732 million. Mayberry Investments saw the most trading activity. It took up nearly 26% of market volume, with people buying and selling nearly 22 million shares in the company. The stock was also this week's second biggest gainer, gaining $2.23 to open this new week at $8.23. Fesco traded the second highest volume, with people buying and selling nearly 8 million shares in the company. The stock gained $0.08 cents to open this new week at $2.75. And Supreme Ventures rounded out the most traded, taking up nearly 9% of market volume. The stock gained one cent to open this week at seventeen dollars seventy nine cents. Now let's see who had the biggest gains for the week. KLE Group stock price jumped a whopping seventy one percent to close last week at two dollars fifty cents. And that Sibony rain won't let up, rounding out our biggest gains. Sibony Group is up twenty nine percent to open this week at eighty eight cents. On the losing side now, Productive Business Solutions' 9.75% cumulative redeemable stock was the biggest loser for the week, down nearly 32%. The stock closed last week at $70.76. Trans-Jamaican Highway USD went down 17% to open the new week at $0.01 cent USD. And rounding off the week's biggest losers, Epley 7.5% preference shares due 2024 lost 14% to close last week at $6.50. Market recap was brought to you by Sagicor Investments. Think wealth, think Sagicor Investments. This segment of Taking Stock, the analysts, is brought to you by Proven Wealth and Ideal Portfolio Services. Welcome back. Time now for the analyst. I see some people are, you know, they, they have your back for the analyst. Katrina says, Kalila, you got to treat the analyst to rum packages. You know, I got you. Christmas is coming. We have to make sure that everybody is well taken care of. And also for our viewers, Marcus says, I hope Kalila giving away some of those Apple done gift baskets for Christmas. So, of course, our Christmas special will come up. What day? Let me see what day that's going to be. Uh, probably December 14 will be our pre-Christmas show where we'll do the giveaways. It's become tradition. So we give away some money. Of course, we'll have special gifts from our sponsors and uh, investment packages as well, meaning uh, money towards your investment accounts. So definitely want to tune in for that. And again, make sure you subscribe to the newsletter so you know when all of these things are coming up. So any surprises in the market report just now in market recap? I see uh, what was the top what was the top performer again? Um uh, why, why, why does my mind uh, play tricks on me? It was KLE Group, 70-something percent. I wonder why that jumped so much. And then Sibony, you know, they've been on a, a run for the past few weeks as well. Well, let me introduce my analyst panel. Who do we have with us this week? I see Wealth Advisor at Ideal Portfolio Services, Dwayne Taylor, joins us. Also, Assistant Manager of Private Equity at Proven Management, Julian Morrison, and Research and Strategy. Strategy Analyst at Sagicor Investments, Jodianne Harris. Welcome back to the show, everybody. 
Hi, Hello. Kalilo. Hey, everyone. Hey, Kalilo. I don't know why it feels like I haven't spoken to any of you in a while. Like, maybe I just missed you. Miss you too, Kalilo. Miss you too. Oh, <laughs> you guys are so sweet. <laughs> so any surprises in the, the market recap just now? Anybody know what's going on with, with KLE Group? Why that suddenly took a jump? 70 something percent it was up last week well i haven't heard any news but the thing with some of these stocks is that the ones that have less activity behind them on average in terms of we're talking about you know news the big ticket stocks um the quieter stocks there 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 are sometimes situations where traders want to take a bet on them um and it can generate activity because on our market, we have what is called return chasing. So when we see a security move by a certain percentage point, it will trigger another set of traders to jump in and try and get on the train. So um, that could be a function of it. And it could okay. be the same situation for Sibani as well. Right. Well, we know people have been watching Sibani since those ads came out. I don't know if the ads are still running. But let's look at some results starting locally and then internationally. We've been talking in the last segment about uh, manufacturing companies, people, companies in the food industry specifically. Well, Seprod's results are out for the nine months ended September 30. jodi -Ann, give me the highlights from Seprod. Okay, so just a background. Just remember that um, Seprod would have had a fire in October of this year. Um, right. So, you know, just on these results won't reflect um, the impact of that, of that fire. Um, but we saw for the three months um, ending September 2021 that they actually ac achieved increase in revenue. So the revenue was up by about 1.3 billion. However, when it is that you look at the direct expenses, that rose by 2.7 billion. And so that would have had a steep impact on, on the margins, so particularly the gross margins. Um, in this third quarter fell to about 23.6%, coming from a high about 40.6%. And this continues to reflect the impact of global supply chains and, you know, the higher cost for input products. And part of what Separate has done is that they haven't necessarily passed on all the costs to consumers. So they have absorbed some of it. And so they are taking on a bit of that cost. So instead of increasing the price of goods by, you know, the extent to which there are no costs of production, similarly, um, they are not absorbing all of that. They are trying to find, you know, other ways to cut costs so that, you know, that's a little bit better on, on us, the consumers. Uh, what they note, though, is that, you know, the deficit in that, you know, the realignment is, is showing some amount of success. So when it is that you look at quarter one and quarter two and the impact that those rising prices would have had, it's not as steep. Um, however, when you look at the net profit that was down by about 58%, um, I think net profit fell to about $500 million, um, coming from a you know coming from almost one million in the prior year and this decline you know must be put in the context because there was actually in the corresponding quarter 2020 there was a one-off gain um, of 762 million when they made the sale of a property so if it is that you take out that one-off gain from last year then there's actually an increase of 18 percent um in net profit um, just to know that right after, similarly, you know, right after results, um, SEPRA would have announced their, their dividend declaration, um, the second one for the year. And one of the good things is that when you look at the dividend per share, um, it is going back now to pre-pandemic levels. So it is at 50 cents and the other two dividend declarations um, that would have happened in since the pandemic would have been at 30 cents. And 50 cents is where it was like, prior to COVID level. So it shows that, you know, there is some amount of confidence in the company. Um, you know, in, in this is that, you know, they would have been holding cash as a buffer in some instances because we're not sure what's happening with the pandemic. But we're seeing that they are becoming a little bit more relaxed. And so, you know, that is reflected in the dividend payment. Um, also, they would have opened, uh, I think, a new warehouse. Um, I don't have full details on all of it as yet, but that would have been, you know, opening up of a new warehouse. Um, in response to the fire so things are you know a little bit you know a little bit still feeling the hang of the impact of these global supply chains and we expect that we're going to carry some of this into 2022 um but you know things are you know looking a little bit better for separate um they were already working on building out um their own warehouse and so you know in terms of the impact of the fire that is not expected to be as steep um going forward 
All right. That's good to hear about Seprod always. And we always look out for those Seprod dividends. <laughs> Definitely something to, to highly anticipated by investors. The big news this week on the business scene has been uh, an international development regarding Pfizer. So for the past year, year and a half, we've been focused so much on the development of COVID vaccines and now the distribution of COVID vaccines. Vaccine hesitancy has been an issue, but now there has been a major breakthrough in the treatment of COVID-19 with a pill developed by Pfizer. So Duane, tell me how that has impacted uh, Pfizer stock prices. <laughs> All right. Hi, Kalila. Hi, everyone. All right. So this news, this announcement actually came off the heels of their Q3 financials um, and they had a very strong quarter. So their revenue for that period actually went up by 134% for Q3. So we're talking about from 10.27 billion to 24.09 billion. And that a lot of that revenue uh, had to factor in with the, the vaccine. I think that it's Comerna. I always butcher the name, but Comerna Tick. Uh, essentially, they, it, it, it took up roughly 14 or 13 billion of the revenue brought in. So obviously that that's huge news for the company. It's um it's 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 a positive outlook in terms of all right th there's a lot of take up of the vaccine and and actually 2.6 billion doses were manufactured year to date. So as at up to October 31st they have produced roughly 2.6 billion um, vials of the vaccine and have distributed 2 billion worldwide. So we find that the take up has been extremely good um even though you know the, the, the vaccination rates might not be so favorable in different parts of the world. They are distributing and there is a huge take up. What I found even more interesting is that their business line has not only up, um, improved just for the vaccine or the, the, the major part of it only isn't only dependent on the vaccine, but a lot of the drugs that they produce have actually seen um, an increase in demand. So for for some for the Iliquis Apaxiban, the names for them are crazy. I know, Gosh. good them. But for that drug, uh, the revenue for that went up nineteen percent, and that right. one is related to uh, stroke, blood clots, and as you know, that's related to um, COVID. They've seen cases where persons have suffered from blood clots. Uh, a lot of their cancer-related drugs have been up. 51 percent when and obviously they have a have a suit of cancer drugs for the different types of of cancer um cancer treatment out there but that's up 51 percent and even for heart failure uh vindamax <laughs> which i get but that's up 42 percent so you see where their different business lines or actually their different product lines have been improving for them so now fast forward to them announcing uh the, this new covid pill essentially uh it it's 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 it has changed up things in the market because a month prior uh, a competitor Merck in 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 the UK they actually announced a COVID pill as well but the the rate of uh, the rate of protection from hospital hospitalization and death uh, was about fifty percent but for the for Pfizer it's actually at eighty nine percent so the market took that and ran with it we saw where. Uh, Pfizer went up roughly about 11%, as was mentioned earlier. But the competitors, their stock price took uh, took some hits. So we saw where Moderna fell. We saw where uh, some of the other competitors fell as well. So it's it's very interesting. Um, it's not to say that Pfizer is the better option. Obviously, persons have to be objective and look into you know what what well, that's a, that's a that's largely a perception issue to the doing exactly. so a lot of people think that pfizer is the better option and we've been seeing that here in jamaica with the demand people want or are, are waiting on the pfizer it's the only one that or the first one that was fda approved so mm -hmm. pfizer has come out a winner so far in this pandemic so and we're seeing that like you said impact on the sales of their other drugs because right. their reputation has they've, they've taken a, a real reputational win in this pandemic absolutely and i mean it's really just for them to to you know play out this time obviously they're going to take advantage of the increased interest in their products they're going to take advantage of 
the somewhat publicity um, of you know them having the somewhat better option in the market. But it will be interesting to see how it will play out because at the end of the day, it's down to the consumer. Which one do you feel most comfortable with? And each of these pharmaceutical giants have had uh, different issues in the past. So as much as Pfizer might be having an excellent quarter, you know, there's still persons out there that would have apprehensions towards taking it. So we will just see how it plays out, but they're definitely um, flying high right now based off of the performance and this big announcement. And the stock price, I don't remember if you told us about it. The stock price went up 11%. So I, 11%, I, I right. think as at today, I mean, it, the, the, the stock price compared to the other competitors isn't that high. I think it traded at roughly about $47 us um today so it's not it's not uh, an expensive option per se but obviously with that type of gain it's going to impact you know investors portfolios and they're going to look forward to those those capital gains and if you're interested viewers and listeners in purchasing some Pfizer stock you can contact Dwayne they're at ideal portfolio services they do trade U.S. stocks on your behalf and speaking of trading U.S. stocks Proven Wealth does the same thing and Julian has had his eye on Dollar Tree for some time now last time you told us about Dollar Tree this was a winner for you Julian what's the latest with Dollar Tree okay so Dollar Tree they saw earnings for their half year results um, up 29%. They agree they're up 29%. And they landed at 657 million. And they're actually on track to make about 1.31 billion versus 1.34 billion for last year. But what's interesting is that they could actually beat that level if this Christmas is stronger than the prior, than Christmas last year. Clearly, because we are now heading back outside, we're talking about higher vaccination rates in the U.S. and, of course, consumer spending coming in strong. I'm gonna so, buy everybody Christmas gift at the dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're getting into that. So everybody get a Dollar Tree Christmas gift. <laughs> no, so, stocking stuffers in the United yeah. States, people do stocking stuffers a lot. So yeah, it could work. For right, that. right, and of course, they have loot bags and things like that. You know, yeah, um, small items that people might get. So. In terms of sales, the revenues are up about 2.06% to 12.83 billion. And the, the the cost of goods sold, so we're dealing with inventory um, expenses and other um, inputs, that was up about 1.57% to 9 billion. So it crept up slightly, but sales grew more than the cost of their, their, their variable um, expenses or their inputs, which is good. The company also contained their operating expenses so those were down two percent which is commendable and in terms of the operating cash flows operating cash flows were down about 49 percent but what's interesting is that operating cash flows came in 736 million which is higher than earnings which is a good sign it means that the company is still um earning healthy amount of cash compared to profit so it means that the the, the quality of profit is still high now when we look at how cash flows move we realized that the company was tapping into their working capital lines and they were actually buying more inventory, which means that they anticipate higher demand. So when we see companies stacking up, um, stacking up different business lines and they're looking at ramping up their quantities, it means that they expect that demand will be there to take that quantity down the line. So that goes in line with our expectation to come out stronger in terms of profitability down the line. So it means that the company is bullish if you see them buying up more inventory. And it means that they're, 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 there's a positive signal or there's something that management is seeing down the line in terms of demand. Now, going further. Before, looking, before I continue, Julian, they have been impacted by these same supply chain issues. And right. so their, their numbers have not been as high as expected. So the projections were for them to earn a certain amount. They didn't hit their targets. Right, right. Um, so we would have seen that supply chain issues, as you mentioned, would have come into play. It means that in terms of their volumes, they wouldn't be able to move as flexibly which is why they would need to double down on buying up inventory and getting ahead of additional inflation that could come down the line. So it means that if they're able to buy more inventory now, it means that they could get those inventory um, volumes 
at potentially cheaper prices than if they had waited another two weeks, another three weeks, another four weeks. They're trying to manage their margins and trying to maximize on their performance, which is a very um, interesting tactic in order to mitigate against that risk. Now, we're banking on a strong Christmas season, and we know that Thanksgiving and Black Friday is coming up. So we expect those volumes to come in, which would feed into sales. And as we can see, expenses are being contained. So that should flow through to earnings, which is good. Consumer spending is strong. Um, even up to September, we saw where consumer spending data was up. And what's behind this is the fact that not just consumer spending is up, but the labor market is seen where wages are creeping up because many persons have not been going back to work. So it means that employers have been bidding up on the cost of um, labor. So people are paying employees more and it will feed into consumer spending down the line. And we expect this, expect this to feed into sales for companies like Dollar Tree. What's also important is that the company has a solid brand. There are people who want to buy things for Christmas and they want to um, buy gifts on a budget. And this, this is a tailwind for the company. So this should fuel, fuel sales and trickle into earnings. In terms of the price itself, it's about $111.15. And the PE is about 17 times. The return on equity is 22 times, which means that 22%, which means that you're getting good value in terms of the return on equity versus the price. So the performance is good, and it means that the price is not as high compared to other retail players that are in that category. The stock itself is down 7.66% compared to the 52-week high, but it's up 10% um, compared to the 200-day moving average. So it's a stock that people have been watching. The leaders right now are really in the tech industry. There are some health healthcare players that are also doing very well. But this is a good value play for investors to look at. It's not really a dividend play, but when you look at the fundamentals of the business, it's 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 potentially a company that could benefit from all of these factors going into the next two, three quarters and have a decent financial year, given that so many firms are being crushed or pressured by inflation. Right. Well, of course, if you're interested in Dollar Tree or any of the companies we spoke about today, you can contact Julian there at, well, you don't do that part of the, the work anymore, but you can hook up people and tell them who to contact there. Over That's right. I'll put it on. I'll put it on. Yeah, for sure. And uh, over at Sagicore Investments as well and at Ideal Portfolio Services. And of course, just our disclaimer, this is not intended as investment advice. Consult your licensed <laughs> financial advisor at any of these fine institutions for recommendations on companies that are right for your portfolio, investments that are right for your portfolio. Thanks, Dwayne. Thanks, Julian. Thanks, Jodianne. Always great having you. Thanks, Kalila. All right, Kalila, thanks. All right, and all our viewers, stay with me. Let's have a little chat. And of taking stock, the analysts was brought to you by Proven Wealth and Ideal Portfolio Services. Okay, so who's taken the poll already? Uh, I should go on the channel and let me see how many people have taken the poll. Who and today's poll, it's on the community section of the YouTube channel youtube.com slash Kalila Ray or just search for my name on YouTube and you'll find the community section. We have our polls every week and this week's question is about Christmas. Have you started preparing for Christmas yet given the discussion that we just had? And uh, let me see, a few people have voted already. We have 61 votes, 10% so far say yes, I'm feeling the Christmas spirit already. 26% say no, but I'll get on it soon. But the vast majority of you, 62% say no. I don't think I'll be doing anything special for Christmas. What? You guys? Christmas canceled this year? No, you can't. You can't not do anything special for Christmas. I know it's a pandemic, but come on now. Mm. Don't be any Debbie Downers. I didn't put up my Christmas tree. <laughs> Let me know in the comments as well what it's like for all of you. Any, any plans? Do you know what you're going to do yet? Have you started decorating? Have you started looking at toys for the kids or whatever it is that you plan to buy or making, like, I'm trying to, to find an upholsterer. Uh, some of you who follow me over on IG might know that I got a 
really outrageous quotation to reupholster my sofas some months ago, but I think I found a place that, that does it at a much more reasonable price. This is the second Christmas that I've tried to get this done. Last year, I tried too late and everywhere was like booked up. Nobody was taking any new furniture for reupholstering. So this year, I'm trying to do it a little bit early. Jordan says, never liked Christmas, and this is a great excuse. Oh, you're such a Grinch, Jordan. Uh, same person says, can't see you this year, COVID. <laughs> uh, Marcus, nothing special for Christmas. You guys, don't do this. I love Christmas. One of my favorite, if not my favorite, actual holiday. You know, the food, the family, just the, the spirit of all being together. Come on. I stop laughing at me, Rodane. Don't laugh. Why you laugh? Simone, Simone is laughing too. Why are people laughing? Shane, Shane says such a Grinch, bro. <laughs> Don't laugh at me because I like Christmas and y'all not feeling it. Nicola says Christmas still a keep. <laughs> yes, Katrina, pepper light half a keep. No man, you must. Come on, guys, let's stimulate the economy with our Christmas spending. <laughs> at least, at the very least, have to prepare for the family. Oh, man. Well, yeah, based on what we've been hearing with these uh, these rates of inflation, things haven't been, been looking so good. So maybe not. You don't have to overspend, but you can, you can just, just put up a one light. No, put up a, a small tree and a one star on the tree. At least have something, man. Come on. Don't be don't be such Debbie Downers this Christmas. <laughs> got to put up the pepper lights. I'm with you, Shane. You got to do a little something, something. All right. So let me just remind you all that the, because some of you joined late and you didn't hear the introduction, save the date. If you're not on the newsletter, if you're on the newsletter, you would have known this already. But save the date, November 29th. November 29. That is when the masterclass is finally going to launch. I've been working so hard on it, trying to get this out, trying to get it ready, making sure that everybody who wants it knows about it and will be able to access it, working on the payment side because producing something is one thing. And you might think that that is the hardest part of it, but then selling it is a whole other ball game, figuring out how to get paid, what platform to use. Trust me, it's a whole big thing. So we're going to have a six-part video series masterclass accompanied by an ebook, which I'm also trying to get on Kindle and the audiobook version on Audible. You also are going to get my investment tracker spreadsheet. Of course, you'll have my broker guide. Some of you already have the broker guide, but that's included in the package for people who are new to the platforms. And we have lots of cool exercises and quizzes included in there to make it a little bit more fun and interactive so that you can, you know, retain the information a little bit better. So just tell a friend about it. If you have somebody, if you know somebody who is interested in this product, it's investing for beginners. So if you've been trying to start, but you still feel like you still feel a little bit uncomfortable, like you're not fully sure of how to make those first steps, then this is for you. It also makes a very good Christmas present for somebody. And I will be giving away some free copies of the masterclass or free subscription, whatever you want to call it. Uh, during that Christmas episode of Taking Stock that will be on December 14th. But the masterclass officially launches on November 29th, setting that date in stone right now, so hold me to it. Some will be given away on the Taking Stock episode on December 14th, our pre-Christmas episode. So make sure that you are on that mailing list so that you can get the direct links, kalilareynolds.com slash newsletter. Great Christmas present because it's the gift that keeps on giving, teaching you how to invest. Come on, you can make money all 2022. It's a great uh, New Year's resolution gift for yourself as well. If it's something that you just always wanted to do and never got around to it, well, New Year's is a great time to do it. So make sure that you tune in and get all of that. Let's see what else comments do we have here. Encourage your followers to be prepared for the literal 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness between January, December and January payday. Yes, that is so true because the December pay comes early. You get paid like around the 15th 
ahead of Christmas and then January payday just takes forever, ever, ever to come. So yeah, you do have to be prepared for that. Uh, yeah, that long, long payday, that long January payday to come. So, so my product won't be too expensive right now. I still haven't find, settled on a price, but I'm thinking about $29.99 uh, US would be the cost for it. So more than likely, that will be it. Hopefully very soon I can give you my studio tour too. I have a lot going on here. Uh, I'm going to be traveling soon. So one of these episodes coming up soon are going to be from Farin. <laughs> You'll get to, to see some things. But thank you so much for joining me again this week on Money Mondays. Check out Money Mondays JA, last night's episode. It is up on YouTube and on my website right now. It's talking about day trading, explaining what it is, how you can make money from doing it, some of the pros and cons of day trading. And then tomorrow night, we have Money Moves JA. We are, what are we talking about again on that show? I can't even fully remember, but it's in the newsletter. So check that out. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in yet another week. I appreciate your presence, appreciate you spending this time with me, and I'll see you again next week. Until then, everybody. Let's say it together. Let's get this money. Later, guys.